for us it's trying to keep it as simple as possible um, but also getting the most returns out, out of that carcass because we're selling stores so we get one chance and I guess your reputation rests a bit on, on, on yep. how those animals are going to do yeah and, and we want that feedback again EID comes into that getting feedback from the fatteners that our system or the, the hinds are working So you're using breeding values at all? Yeah, these, these yeah we used, um, certainly with the uh, deer improvement stuff, and also probably my best stags actually, but the, the next tier down are um, poor users of Thai Heavy. In the past we have bought a couple of um, size stags from Leatherdale deer um, down south, and yeah, the, the breeding value is we do find quite I do use pretty valleys and that and, and the confirmation we do tend to go for one that has a higher OBV but yeah it makes it challenging when yeah not not a lot of studs actually do use it so um, so be helpful if more of them did. Yeah yeah it would it would make, make it sound, gives you a lot more confidence that's for sure. It was originally probably a half Whoppity herd. Um, previous guys have added red to that. Um, more of a more of an eastern red has been used. So they're big hinds. Like um, the average weight of their hinds is probably 135, 140 k's at that point. Yeah. So I've been trying. I've been sort of more of an English red and trying to maybe get that down to 120 kilo hind um, and then aim to feed her better. So your breeding hides are going to evolve to uh, uh, well, probably what about a sort of 120 to 130? Yeah, that would be perfect. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and still producing a good 60 kilo animal, 160 kilo hind that's producing um, 70 kilo weaner yeah. takes a lot of tucker yeah, yeah. compared to a 120 kilo hind producing a 60 or 65 kilo weaner. What's your ideal hind? You know, growth and temperament has been has been basically the drivers, uh, and we've been well rewarded for that. Yeah, probably our hind size is getting large enough. Yeah, mm -hmm. efficiency is probably um, something I want to be very aware of, aware of going forward. Yeah. Uh, Just in terms of feed conversion. And feed conversion yeah. and the ability to handle the whole country. Uh, some of our productive figures I guess um, that show quite a good um, quite good results above the national average maybe be because we uh, we wean early and they form their average fawn dates probably a few days ahead of the national average. I think mm -hmm. the national average fawn dates worked out about the 25th of November. Right. Well we don't have many fawn, fawns born after that day. Mm -hmm. Most of our the hinds for uh, basically made it in one cycle. Yeah, yeah. Because we take the stag out pretty early of most years. Before. Trying to get a balance. So I mean, we're not buying the heaviest stags that are about because um, they tend to be a bit ugly as well. But just yeah, trying to keep um, a nice clean beam, but a round beam as well with a long, with, uh, a bit of length on the top. So. And for the hinds, what are you after there? What, what's your sort of ideal height? One that gets in corn and, and produces a, a, a heavy two year old velvet stag. Uh, yeah. Good, good size and, and, is, is, and temperament um, is important, but yeah, really it's that velvet. Um, the velvet weight is a two year old, so that's important. When I came in here, the deer are all pretty small. So I've been using an awful lot of Eastern uh, genetics from Deer Improvement, Mike Wilkins, Pure Forest to get some size into them. We've certainly done that. So now my genetics is predominantly peel forest maternals. So long as they, they, um, the stags have pretty good velvet. Yeah. So, and you mentioned too that you're probably not gonna, um, for venison, you're not gonna keep pushing for maternal size. You might just look for good BV. Well, yeah, this, this year when we weighed up the early weaning ones, um, there was no difference in weaner weight between the the WAP crosses and the eastern crosses. 
You know, I've got Eastern Z that have got BVs for 12 months, weighed at 34. You know, our average for a single siren was 26, I think. Are you finding, you know, obviously, hopefully, stags are at that, those sort of BVs that come with a bit of a premium. Are you finding that those are you're getting what you expect to get from, from those stags? Well, yeah, this single sorrel mating will certainly tell that because we've used 34s, we've used the oldest one I'm using that pulls in the single siren is only 21. Because we've never been too much on, on the recording side of things, so we've got the new shed and we've got the TSI bait thing, and, and the boys, well, I was all overseas actually, put, it, put all the hinds, the single siren mod hinds, on that. So we know the hind side of things, we know what the stag's gone to, so we'll, we'll form them individually. And just tag them, follow them through, which you know we haven't been able to do here with the old shed and the facilities. It's just it wasn't worth our while, but now we can, so we might just progress a bit quicker. Do you really see that uh, manifesting itself in, in, in carcass weights and growth rates? Yeah, yeah. There's there's no doubt. Um, that's what we've been breeding for. You know, we've seen how these genetics can really fit our system and it's increased our profit profitability a long way. Because we've been finishing wieners that are that are bought in the whole time, we've recognised that there is a quite a difference in how certain animals perform um, that have got whatever the genetics are. Um, we know that the same animal um, from one place um, versus another place, uh, the average growth rates between arrival and slaughter can be 150 grams a day or 300 grams a day. And effectively, uh, during that time, those animals eat, growing at uh, 300 grams a day are only eating the same feed as the 150 grams a day, except they're there for shorter time because they they get up to weight faster. So that has been a, a key focus um, and that's flowed well and truly through to our breeding operation as well. Um, we, we want to produce weaners that grow as fast as they can and a heavy at an early stage which gives us the flexibility to kill them if we just so desire and if the climatic conditions dictate that we need to kill them earlier than we would like because they're heavy we still can but conversely we can still take them heavier if they've got the potential to grow further.